you've seen my previous video on the Percy Jackson movies, I've mentioned that I was a bit sad that Walker and Leia do not look like Percy and Annabeth physically. But all of that went away when I watched the first two episodes of Percy Jackson and the Olympians on Disney+. Plus. I literally screamed when I heard Percy say the iconic first line. Look, I didn't want to be a half-blood. And I was smiling all throughout the show. Rick really chose an amazing cast to play our lovable trio, and I never should have doubted him. And that's what I wanted to discuss with you. I do have a lot of thoughts on the first two episodes, but I wanted to focus on the main characters and how they were portrayed. Let me introduce myself again for those of you who are new to my channel. Hi, I'm Zidney, longtime Percy Jackson fan, and here are my thoughts on the trio. It's not a typo guys, I intentionally wrote Grover Underdog because I believe Grover Underwood doesn't get much love. Thankfully, Grover really stood out in the first episode. In the Percy Jackson movies, sorry guys, they will still come up. Grover was the one who was always blurting out one-liners. He was the funny one among the trio. I guess this type of character fits with Brandon Jackson, the actor who played Grover in the movies. However, that wasn't the case in the books. In the books, I had always imagined Grover to be this small, scared, and very nervous satyr. Percy mentioned that Grover was an easy target for bullies. He was scrawny and he cried when he got frustrated. On top of all that, he was crippled. Nancy Bobofit, a redhead bully, was constantly throwing wads of peanut butter sandwich that got stuck in Grover's hair. And even though Percy wanted to do something about it, Grover was always calm about it. So when I watched the first episode, I was really glad to see Grover finally be portrayed more accurately. Aryan's Grover is different from Brandon's Grover. He was able to portray the very nervous satyr. He was talking a lot, something people do when they're nervous. I noticed though that Grover was the one who was giving us a major information dump. And then I checked the books again. Grover was really the one explaining everything so quickly to Percy. Overall, Aryan did an amazing job as a Grover. He was able to portray our determined protector well. Though I admit I didn't love the way he betrayed Percy and got him expelled, especially since it wasn't originally part of the book. But I guess it's to make the story move faster. However, I would say that the chemistry between Percy and Grover is there. I especially love Percy's reaction when Grover admitted his real age. Yeah, I'm actually 24. Hold on, please. Next, Leia as Annabeth Chase. In the books, Annabeth is a white teenager with tan skin and a slender, athletic body. She has honey long blonde hair set in perfect curls like Cinderella. Percy said that she looked like a typical California girl, except that her stormy gray eyes ruined the image. As many of you know, Leia faced a lot of criticism when she was cast because people were expecting Annabeth to be white, having blonde hair and gray eyes. And I admit, I was also disappointed at first. And to be honest, I'm still wishing for a blonde-haired, gray-eyed Annabeth. But Annabeth's physical attributes are less important than her personality. So when I saw Leia play Annabeth, I understood why Rick chose her. The way she looked at Percy, she has her annoyed look perfected. And the way she delivered her lines, just so very Annabeth. I could sense her arrogance, the I'm smarter than you tone from her voice, and finally the way she interacted with Percy. Wise girl, you guys are going to fall in love and fall into hell. Finally, Walker asked Percy Jackson. Just like most of you, we first saw Walker alongside Ryan Reynolds in The Adam Project. And I believe that when we heard the news about him playing Percy, we were set because we trust that he can bring Percy's sassiness to life. And it was truly evident when I saw him in the Percy Jackson series. He flawlessly made me laugh several times in the first two episodes. You fell in love with God? Like, like, like Jesus? And that's just the first two episodes. But oh, how I still wish they dyed Walker's hair black and gave him green eye contacts. But Walker is still our lovable Persassy Jackson. And I can't wait to see more of Seaweed Brain. An awesome cast for Chiron. Love his interaction with Mr. D. I didn't love what they did with Sally. 
Sally has always been kind and gentle, and she has never raised her voice, not even to Gabe. So when she told Gabe off, I was not too happy about it. Not that I'd rather her be a pushover, but it's just that I had always imagined Sally to be kind and gentle like Cinderella. Cinderella didn't need to be a girl boss. Her greatest strength was her kindness. Disney's live adaptation of Cinderella did this so well too. But that's just me. However, I absolutely love her taste in music. I was definitely not expecting Olivia Rodrigo's Logical to be in the Percy Jackson series. Smelly Gabe felt short for me since I expected him to be this really, really terrible person. But he was just annoying in the series. So let's wait and see if he'll act more terrible. Deserving of getting turned to stone. Luke had always been Percy's big brother figure, and they managed the show Luke guiding Percy. However, it's at the expense of Annabeth's interactions with Percy. Oh, definitely a bully. Just absolutely perfect. Jason was the best among them. I absolutely love his first interaction with Percy. That particular scene wasn't even part of the books, but it's something Mr. D would definitely do. I admit that I'm not really a big fan of Book Mr. D because I have always imagined him to be the cynical bitter god. But Jason playing Dionysus changed the way I see Mr. D and I just can't wait for more. Just perfect. So those are just my quick thoughts on our main characters. We have yet to see more of the cast in the upcoming episodes, so I don't want to conclude anything yet. We've been waiting years for this, guys. It's finally here. So I'm staying hopeful. <laughs> Big shout out to my friends Zeno and Alvin. Hi, guys. Thanks for pushing me to make this video. I was really going to make one, guys. But thank you for all your support. I will also try to play more Pokidoku with you guys. Give me a break. I really suck at that game, you know. Anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you again next time. Bye-bye.